quick break. I just want to say thank you for all the people around the world, Jamaica, Germany, um, Asia, Europe, South America. Thank you for listening to Leap of Hell. Thank you for the support. And remember, my book is out. You can find it on Barnes and Nobles and Amazon. It's called Parents Are Greatest Teachers. Thank you again for all the support. And now, back to our episode. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Alex Belgood, and this is Leap of Health. And today, we have Katie Cross. She's a nurse, certified nurse, and a cannabis nurse navigator, which I thought it was super, super interesting. I had this, this is sad, I guess, and what you do. And also, we're going to be talking about cocoa. Oh, my God, this word. Cacao. Cacao. There, there it is. Cacao ceremony. So we're going to talk about that and what it does, what it is. I know uh, a lot of you have probably seen it somewhere in social media or heard about it. And so we're very curious about what it is. Um, um, if it's more than chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and what it really does for everyone. So thank you, Katie, for being here today. Thanks so much for having me, Alex. I'm super excited to chat about this with you. Yes, yes. All these um, conversations about psychedelic ceremonies like this that they have been there for a long time. I think it's amazing how they're coming back and uh, the importance of it. So before we dive into all that, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became from being a nurse, which is so important, because as I said it before, my mom is a retired nurse, to be um, what you are now, a practitioner, yeah. holistic. Well, I'll, I'll try to make that story short. It's been a process of unfolding, um, as all of our stories are, right? I started in the intensive care unit back in 2007 and found really quickly that it was I had major moral incongruency with that system. Um, I was always gravitated towards nursing to be a healer and I didn't see healing happening. And the closest that it got was at the end of life for me, like watching that process. Um, I was in a trauma ICU, so we saw some pretty awful things um, and horrible things that can happen. Um, and so that was really a struggle for me. And that just really started me on this path of seeking connection between spirituality and health and healing. And I, I knew that there were other forces at play in the physical health, in the physical body. And I know that now to be the energy system and the endocannabinoid system. But I knew that how we process our stories directly impacted our health, but nobody was talking about that around me. Um, so I found myself in hospice work and that was like the most sacred work ever is to be at the deathbed and to be walking people and their families through that process. Um, and then I found myself really burnt out. I took a really a big step back from patient care. And during that time I was recruited to a church. I was asked to be a church nurse. And so I was, in, I was the parish nurse coordinator of a 5,000 member congregation. And so then I was free to talk about how our health and our spirituality came together. And, and that was like so freeing for me. I'm like, yes, this is what I'm talking about. And I could have done that job forever. Um, but then I, uh, my husband and I went through some difficulties and challenges in our marriage, and we decided that we needed to move um, to be closer to one another. He was working on the road a lot. And so uh, long story short, I went to Africa in 2015. I have this crazy spiritual awakening. It's the first time in my life I've not been hypervigilant. I feel safe in my body, and I'm in Africa. And I feel so grounded and at peace. And I was like, what is this feeling and why don't I have it? Why did I have to come to Africa to feel it? Why don't I have this every day? And then everything changed. Um, and I was back in hospice care at that point here in Minnesota. And I was, I was visiting probably this patient goes down, hands down. She was my teacher, but she was also my hardest. Um, it was my hardest case I had ever taken care of in end of life and her family had hired a healing touch practitioner. And so I watched as this woman like waved her arms around her body and I watched my patient just get so comfortable and relaxed. And I asked this woman, she's just radiant. I mean, just glowing. And I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, well, I'm doing healing touch. Are you familiar? And I said, 
yeah, it's come up a couple of different times in my nursing career, starting back when I was ICU nurse. But I knew right, I knew then that I, I wasn't able to quiet my mind long enough to do the work. And so um, she said, well, then you're being called to the work and you're not paying attention. And I was like, I felt truth in my body in that moment. And I was like, oh, shit. <clears throat> and so I took a class. I started feeling energy with my hands. And I was like, this is it. And so in 2018, I walked away from my job as a director of nursing to enter into my business and my practice full time. I was seeing miracles happening on my table every day. You know, women clearing traumas that were causing UTIs and infertility, you know, in one session, whatever that was being held in their body, they released it and then their goal, they could meet their goals like one session. And so I was just like, I have to do this. <laughs> Um, and so that's, I left and I've been in practice now for four years. Um, and I brought on cannabis and cacao medicine as kind of my plant spirit allies but within the last year. In 2021, I went through a really serious uh, medical issue. I um, had my, the vocal, my nerve to my vocal cord was severed in surgery. And so I was without a voice and they told me I would never speak again. I would only have a whisper. And that really, because of my own beliefs really dove me deeper into the healing path and and that's when cacao was revealed to me as a plant medicine and so i've been using cacao now in ceremony for um for just a, you know a little, little less than a year and i use cacao together with cannabis uh, for their therapeutic effects to really support women they're both medicines of embodiment and i am here on this planet to get women more connected to the spirit that dwells within them through their bodies so that's 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 how i came to it no, that's, that's amazing. And, and I'm glad, uh, not, you know, not glad, but I'm glad you went through, through that. And I'm glad you went through that healing. So today we can actually hear your, your testimony and everything that you do. I think, you know, we go through all these things that we have no clue. And at the moment they seem super harsh and we're like deep in a hole and we feel like, we can't get out of it and that it's going to be there forever. And so I'm glad that you came out of that well and good and you can speak to us and you're helping a lot of people. So I am so grateful for you. So yay. Oh, thank you. And um, so tell us a little bit about these um, cacao ceremonies. How does this work? What What is it? Um, why a lot of people are starting to notice the cacao ceremonies and why are they doing it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that question. Okay. Well, let's talk first about what is cacao. So cacao is the rawest form of chocolate. Um, it's before it's been processed heavily. And so it comes typically out of the Central Americas. They have been using cacao in ritual and in ceremony for thousands of years. This, this goes back to like, we're talking ancestral time. And so when I look at like the plant medicines, right? I think of mother maiden and crone. I think of cacao as like that mother energy. You think about these trees have been around for, you know, thousands of years. I mean, we're the, the roots are so deep into the earth. And from a plant medicine, like plant spirit, think about the wisdom that, that fruit of that plant then holds. Um, and so there are a lot of places that are doing um, cacao, preparing cacao. You can get it very easily on the internet. Um, I prefer uh, Soul Lift Cacao that has been uh, handpicked and roasted by Indigenous women. Um, and we could get into the mismatch in, you know, mismatch in economics for another time. But um, I just think those women, those sisters, right, are, are the ones who are roasting those beans and their hand, um, hand crushing it. And then it's packaged into a paste. And then that's made and drank. Um, and how it kind of works and the magic behind it is a chemical or a molecule called theobromine. So when cacao and chocolate is processed, that theobromine actually converts into caffeine. And so cacao in its rawest form doesn't have the caffeine, but it has this chemical or this molecule called theobromine. And chocolate also has a chemical or molecule that is associated with anandamide, which is this, what circulates in our endocannabinoid system. That is the, the bliss molecule, okay? And so when we ingest this, and we just did in ceremony and ritual and gathered in community, this medicine actually dilates the heart vessels without speeding up the heart rate. 
And so from an energy standpoint, it's a heart opener. And so why are people being gravitated towards this medicine? Well, let's take a look around in society, right? Like we have closed hearts and we, everyone that we don't have an established sense of safety in our traditional culture right now in our society. And people are being gravitated towards this because we're, we are connecting in circuits of safety through ritual and ceremony with, with strangers. And so from an energetic standpoint, right? Like we're anchoring into community with this cacao medicine um, and we're having these shared experiences. And so what I love to do is to connect and combine cannabis, you know, CBD or THC with cacao ceremonies because they work so synergistically together in that endocannabinoid system. And I always knew that there was one system in our body that was connected to this divine power. And that that was our life force, right? Well, and then I found the endocannabinoid system and it's like, we legit have a chemical in our body called bliss. And that is the connection to the divine. And so cannabis is an entheogen and cacao is also an entheogen. They are molecules that help us connect to that divinity within. And so when we do ceremonies and then we breathe into our heart space, right? And we're in this circuit of safety, I mean, magic happens, like magic happens where people have these great, amazing visions and they feel physical releases out of their body because they're finally safe to process some of the shit they're carrying with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the beauty of the plant medicine. That's awesome. And I mean, I, I love that you explain exactly what they do <laughs> because a lot of people really think it's just chocolate. Yeah, yeah. It's sacred chocolate, like, and it's healing. It's a plant medicine. It's a plant ally that we as humans can use for our healing process. It's so much more than that. And so is cannabis. Long before cannabis was a gummy and, you know, fun to, you know, pop it. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I might pop a gummy and go to Avatar today. That might be on my plans. And I think that that's okay, right? But it's more than that, right? It's It's been a sacred plant used in ways to connect to the spirit long before it was a gummy. Yeah. And so now that we know what um, the cacao ceremony is and what, how you use it, um, how do you do these ceremonies? And what's the reason people come mm -hmm. to do these ceremonies? Well, I would say the ceremonies primarily, well, they, in fact, so far, they've all been attended by women. And I don't think that that's a, I don't think that's not a coincidence, right? I think women are craving feminine connection with one another. Again, COVID really effed things up for a lot of us. And we are craving that nurturing, that loving presence. And that's what cacao offers. Um, so the ceremonies are really, I think, I mean, each one of them is very different depending on the vibe and like what's going on for people. Um, we can speak to like my last one where we come in and um, there's a little bit of time of sharing and I kind of do some education around what to expect and you know experience kind of set the stage. And then everyone gets into tapped into their heart space and they get aligned with their intention of their heart. What do they want out of this experience? What are they seeking? What are they looking for answers to? Um, and so I give some time for that. And then while I'm doing what we call the final froth, um, people are really putting their intention into the medicine. You know, and that's the other big part is that this is plant medicine. So going through and preparing this, I take that very seriously. Um, here's a secret. I, I will share it. When I'm preparing the cacao, I am thinking about, and I have the list of the, the ceremony attendants, you know, written out and I'm thinking about them and, you know, giving them my love as I'm working and chopping paste, right? But I have Celine Dion playing. <laughs> Celine Dion is like who gets me tapped into my heart space. Yeah. And so, I mean, my medicine is infused with Celine Dion. I can't help myself. <laughs> I love her so much. It's great. She's great. And so, um, so yeah, so then we do the final froth and people have an opportunity to set that in, you know, send their intention into the medicine. We go around and then we spend about 30 minutes drinking it. It's very earthy. I mean, and it's kind of, it's very dry. It pulls the moisture out of your mouth. Um, and so then, and then we often time talking about, you know, um, some themes I've been working with is self-compassion. Um, and, and so we go together, go around as women and talk about our struggles and our challenges with, you know, being compassionate with ourselves and, and, and where does that fit in, in how we're showing up in the world as our true and authentic expression. 
Um, and so then we all connect in these really beautiful ways, like women always connect when we're in circle, right? Totally strangers. And we always find that beautiful, juicy, common ground. And then people lay down. And um, and then I walk them through a little guided experience. Most often we start with the breath and um, and then I'll walk around and I do healing touch. That's, that is my magic through my hands and connecting the energy centers between the head and the heart. I think that, that we, I think that the saying goes like the, it's the biggest 12 inches or whatever, like to be able to connect to that, that mind, that mind that never stops is always trying to fix the problem with the heart, which is where, you know, our divinity and our humanity meet. Um, and then often people will cry or they'll, um, you know, there's a wide, wide range of experiences based on kind of what the energy, the tone and the vibe is in that initial connection time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, then I, we get people up and then we have a few minutes at the end to kind of process experiences. I always want to give offerings and opportunities for people to integrate their experience. You can go in and you can be like, oh my gosh, like I felt my heart space come open and I could feel divine love coming out of me. And then it's like, okay, uh, see you later. No, that can sometimes be like a really big spiritual experience. We call those peak experiences. And those need to be integrated to get the full effect, right? Like what we talked about before we started recording was it's work. And that is, um, so yeah, I offer at the end of my ceremonies, I offer opportunities for integration uh, and then follow because sometimes people can have really, really profound and powerful experiences. Um, and I want to make sure that, that that's honored to the full extent um, that it needs to be to support that healing process. Nice. What are some of the things uh things that people experience when they they drink this is is this the cacao and uh the cannabis use as a some sort of a psychedelic what what are the effects what are what people should know before um uh, they want to try this great question great question so cacao is not a psychedelic um it will not okay so I don't want to get in the weeds here, but um, it's, you're not going to feel euphoria from cacao, okay? Um, now, cannabis, on the other hand, is a psychedelic. You do experience that level of euphoria. Um, typically, when I'm doing some, like when I'm doing cacao ceremonies, we use CBD. And sometimes that, you know, together, they can, people can feel lighter. They can feel freer. They can definitely feel bliss in their body. Um, but they are not like having what we would consider like a psychedelic experience from like, um, from, like mushrooms or something like that. Does that mm -hmm. answer your question? Yes. Yes. But what people feel oftentimes is they do feel physical changes and sensations in their heart space. I would say that's probably number one. Number two is people can feel or can see colors, um, especially when I'm holding space for them, you know, on the body work side of things with healing touch. Oftentimes people will see colors behind their eyes and that's just, you know, my symbol for, you know, energies coming into balance in those chakras, right? Um, I had one beautiful story um, where she had this beautiful vision and of her forgiving her sister um, and, and felt a weight come off of her body. Um, so yeah, that's but a lot. And then oftentimes people will feel buzzy isn't the right word it's not a caffeine buzz it's not like a caffeine jittery experience mm -hmm. but there is a there is a change to your heart and like a lightness and like a like a like a vibration change and that would be the best way i can describe it is that it's like you can tell that there's a subtle change in your vibration but it doesn't feel caffeine panic but it feels okay. something different mm -hmm. yeah do um the people that come and experiences do they have uh some other like physical reaction like afterwards because I know with certain um ceremonies um like this traditional some people throws up or not feeling well what what are some of those things that people should also take in consideration? I would say the number one thing is sometimes people can't sleep. Um, sometimes when we like they can get kind of buzzed up in that way where they're excited or energized um, and that people can't. So we we've been experimenting with like times and stuff just for my own personal sake. So running a cacao ceremony at six o'clock at night, I was like, OK, I need to plan for those because then I probably won't be in bed until about two. 
Um, so I would say that's the number one thing. I've never heard or seen anyone throw up or anything like that. Now, when we're talking about cannabis, that's a whole nother, I mean, that's like a whole mm -hmm. other thing, but yeah, for cacao, nothing, no, no side effects like that. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very accessible medicine for most people. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I chose, and I, I feel like this medicine chose me in so many ways, right? Um, that because it is accessible and it is like noticeable and impactful and, um, yeah, like I said, it's accessible for people that they don't, um, you know, it, you don't have to be afraid of it. Like a lot of people out there are afraid of cannabis and there are reasons. I mean, I totally know why, and that I get that. Um, but no reason to be scared from cacao. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, uh, is there any like physical conditions that people might have? And you're definitely like, well, if you have these, this and that, you might not want to try the ceremony. You know, I would say, I would, I would say there would be no contraindications uh, for somebody to take in a cacao ceremony for sure. Yeah. Is, and it, you're talking about cacao ceremony itself or also with cannabis as you do them? Yeah, cannabis is a totally different topic, but like cacao alone, I don't think there would be any contraindications um, to do that, to, to take a cacao uh, dose, a ceremonial dose of cacao. Um, I would say if anything, you know, I think sometimes there's obviously our vulnerable, po vulnerable populations are always people we think of, right? Who are some women who are pregnant and nursing. Um, cacao has lots of an, um, antioxidants and flavonoids. And so it's actually a, like a really nutrient rich, dense uh, drink. And so um, I, there are no contraindications for pregnant and nursing women. Um, the only thing I would be like, and this is just my nursing brain and I think worst case scenario for all things, but um, you know, somebody who's like got a really like tenuous heart condition um, and who's under a lot of stress, like, I would like to believe that everything is working for the highest good and I would be able to hold space in that in that experience for someone for that highest good. But if anything, I would say it could potentially cause um, you know, some heart. I, I wouldn't I I would be concerned there. But I mean, who's gonna mm -hmm. be in a tenuous heart condition and want to be going into a yeah, ceremony? I'm not certain that, that would <laughs> exist. So but again, that's my nurse brain, right? That's I have to look through that lens and that filter all the time. Yeah. And it's good to know that where you're going, you have someone like you that are thinking of all those scenarios, right? That's holding a safe space for for all these. What are some of the main things people come to this ceremony? Why are they coming to this to because try this? People want healing. People want community. People want to feel safe in their bodies. And, and people, I think a lot of women right now feel lost. They feel lost and like, they don't know where they're going next. And, um, and I think people want to come home to the body. They want to come home to that peace within. And I think naturally they're just gravitated towards these kinds of ceremonies. I partner with places like yoga studios and chiropractic offices, and even, um, out in corporate America, um, can it, for team building, right? Is that we're coming, we're uniting over this one thing because we're so divided everywhere we look. And so I think that's really where people are, are gravitating towards this kind of experience in community is because we're all starving for it. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, many people that comes to you for some sort of uh, uh, mental health condition that they want to <laughs> maybe get better and things like that? What are, what are some of those? That you see uh, frequently? Oh, girl, I have got a lot to say about that topic. Um, so, yes, the answer is yes. Um, I would say my number one client base are women who have suffered with anxiety and depression, who have taken the traditional route of therapy and pharmaceuticals, have spent two to four years in therapy, and their quality of life is not any different. And they're recognizing that there's a different way, there's a different path. And a lot of people, I mean, most of women who start working with me, their initial reaction is, I am terrified. What I know I need you. I know this is my next step, but I don't know what's beyond this threshold, what's beyond this point for me. Because they come to realize and recognize that they have trapped and stuffed emotional energy that is like full, their body is full. They are not embodied. 
They are up here and anxious in their heads all of the time. And they recognize that there is, um, when we feel embodied, we don't struggle with anxiety and depression. And when you feel aligned and whole, you know, those symptoms go away. And so I think people are waking up to the idea that anxiety and depression are symptoms of something greater. And that something greater is, is that your spirit is misaligned. You're not whole, you're not taking care of yourself. You're losing yourself in relationships. You're, you know, that is the core. And so mm-hmm. when you start diving into the spiritual work and then more, more than anything, you dive into the body and recognize like, um, I'm holding all of this anger or this grief and we open those channels up, suddenly those mental health struggles just melt away because people are able to be who they are in the world and they're free to be themselves. And all those things that we're holding attachments to of in our identity, we get to let go of and then we get to be us. And that is just a much more free free place to be and a much freer existence in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, for cacao ceremonies, I mean, they've been here for a long, long time. Yes. <clears throat> Tell us a little bit about why they were created and what was the space that they used to hold long time ago? Because yeah. now we, we're we seeing it as like the cool thing to do. But I think I want uh, people to understand why were all these cultures doing it? Yeah. What was like, what was like the main reason? Why are they here to help us and how do they help us? Yeah. How they, meaning the ceremonies or the The ceremony itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think first I want to just name the fact that I am, this is a, a medicine that I am borrowing from another culture, right? Um, I am a German Russian. There is not a scent, like there's no, I am just straight up German, like, and I just want to honor and acknowledge that, that this medicine, um, I am borrowing from another, another culture. Um, and I think about that all the time. And I really try to work in my ceremony, um, honoring those indigenous cultures that do, that did provide us with this medicine. And I really appreciate this question because I think we're all in this kind of like politicized society. Like what exactly is cultural appropriation? Like, what does that mean for me as somebody who's white skinned? Um, and, but, but how do we not let it, how do we keep it from not, from us not accessing the medicine then is because of those concerns. Right. And so I've really tried carefully to walk that line. Um, but these, these rituals, these ceremonies were born to us in indigenous, um, Central American culture. Um, they would gather in circle, right? The circle has been found in all of the different spiritual traditions. And it was an opportunity for them to connect to that divinity. You know, they, there wasn't Google. There was not, I'm not, I'm going to Google my question. No, we have a real problem. We're facing starvation. We're facing illness in the community. What are we going to do? We're going to come back to the plant medicine. We're going to connect with the spirits and they're going to help guide us through that. Like that is what it comes down to at its core is our ability to connect with that inner divinity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. How do we, for everybody that is listening, how do we understand the connection with like, because this sounds really woo-woo, right? Like, oh, okay. Am I going to, what? What is this? What is happening? How do you, and I love that you're a nurse because you have a bigger understanding of like, you know how the body works. You have done the studies. You know what what the body goes through. But now we're talking about the spirit. Mm-hmm. What is how does the spirit? What is the spirit? How is that connected to me and from my illness or my disease or whatever? How does how do I connect those two? Ooh, that is such a loaded question. I've been trying for like twenty years to figure that out myself. Um. <laughs> Okay, well, first of all, and I and I could easily get on so many soapboxes. So let me carefully plan my answer to this. I think one of the biggest issues I saw in my culture coming from traditional German, Norwegian, North Dakota, South Dakota, right? Is that we connected with our spirit through church on Sundays. Um, I grew up in a really, really conservative Lutheran church. And so I saw, right? And so we connect to our spirit through the idea of religion. And I was like, mm, that's a problem because religion, <laughs> religion is run by people and people hurt people. And, you know, we can 
I can talk about religious trauma all day long and how that has really screwed us over in so many ways because in that process, people become disconnected from the fact that we are spiritual beings having a human existence. There are beings in this body and it's not just the physical. There is this greater power and this source that connects all of us. It's called love, right? Um, and so how do we, how do we, how does that work for us, right? Like, how do we come to understand that this same divinity that lives in me lives in you? Um, and, and we're all connected through that. And when we don't honor that, when we don't live a life that trusts that, that believes that, right? We get spiritual incongruencies. We get congested energy fields. We get bogged down in anger and grief and we don't open to compassion. And so there's literally changes in the energy of the body because we've cut ourselves off. And then these balances energetically and spiritually become manifestations into the physical. That's one of the, my most favorite things to do with clients is I just had recently, I had one that was so interesting. Um, she went out on the table. I mean, she was, she was really in that brainwave state of between sleep and wakefulness. And, you know, as a practitioner, it's just, there's such, that's so empowering for me to, to know that people are trust me so much that within minutes of being on the table, they can be in that state of being right. Um, and that goes for on my table or virtual patients as well. Um, but she woke up and she said, my heels, why do my heels hurt? He's like, it was like, my body was just digging my heels in. Well, I just kind of smiled to myself. Cause I was like, well, girlfriend, what you said when you came in and showed, shared me your intake, like, you're, you're digging your heels in. Like you have to change some of your patterns here. You're coming up against resistance in your marriage and you're not, you're, you're, you're not able to see the new possibilities. And so you're coming at it with this old way of being and doing. And so then I bring out my big question book. I have a, a book about this thick that's built on Louise Hay's work. And I, I pull out heels and I start reading off some questions for her to kind of get connected to that being in the body, right? Ask some hard questions. And then it's just that I get to watch their faces when I read these questions because it always just totally resonates and it totally makes sense. And so now instead of fighting this and creating more anxiety and angst because I can't control or change the situation, I realize how am I showing up in the situation? Where's the resistance? Where do I need to unwind old patterns from my parents and all the previous traumas? And then how do I move forward? And, mm -hmm. and that's what then... Uh, that's what allows that energy and that old shit to release from the body. And then we're able to make better and different choices that, that are more aligned and that support optimal health. Yeah, for sure. I think that's super important to really acknowledge. I mean, I've gone through a lot of guests that, you know, keep talking about it, but it is super important to understand that. I think uh, a lot of us, we know now like, okay, yeah, I shouldn't call things because they might make sick. But really doing the work, it's the most important because we could leave that work for, for later and later and later, but then eventually that will- We have a crisis. That, yeah, that will manifest somehow in our body, whether it's um, mental health issues or an actual physical disease or situation that we find ourselves so I think it's just very important to acknowledge that those two bodies are uh, a whole system as I call them you don't mm -hmm. just separate your physical body from your spiritual or energetically body yeah. they all work together right um, exactly. so I think it's just one of those things that sound really weird <laughs> And sometimes it's just hard for our minds to wrap around the idea. But I think that the more we do little things to actually connect the both of, and then I know we have seven and I, I keep quoting these seven bodies that we have because we have a lot of them, right? The mm -hmm. the mind, body, spirit, energetically, and a bunch of the ones that I can never remember. But imagine all that, right? We need to like really have this um understanding of a whole system and how our energy or thoughts um whatever had happened to us are connected to our actual body you know why do you have this low back pain all the time 
Why do you have random headaches all the time? Unless you have, you know, by all means, because some people are really have some situation and some disease or something really major. But even there is like, why do I have that? <laughs> you can't But, tell me that any condition doesn't have some form of stress that triggers it. Right. Mm -hmm. And where do all of our stress comes from? It's our, our, and then our stress is carried in the body. Yeah. So, yeah, I think definitely it's like super, super important to everyone just to understand that and put those two and two together. And, you know, there's a lot of tools. There's, there's a lot of things that, that we can do. There's a lot of practitioners. I mean, I've talked to a lot of different um, people that do different things. Not all medicine, it's, it's for everyone, right? Well, yeah. maybe cacao medicine is not for you. You could be trying breath work or yoga or something like or therapy whatever it is that you think it might help you but I think addressing this big elephant in our lives is just essential for our health yeah 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 it's been essential for me for sure like um Yeah. Once, once I started doing this work and then started doing the work for myself, right. Because there there's difference like that. I was, I was working with people, but I wasn't really necessarily doing all the work myself. And once I began to see my connections and my, my patterns come out, have come out through my thyroid. Um, and you know, just making those connections, it was just like, it became such an embodied truth for me that there's just no other possibility that You know, this was one of the reasons why we as a country and we as a world are so sick is we have cut ourselves off from that spiritual, physical connection. Mm -hmm. And also, too, as you're mentioning, you know, we forget about ourselves. We're taking care of everyone else. And bottom line, nobody's going to come and do all the work for us. Like nobody's going to uh, come heal our traumas. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing can do our own healing which sucks, right? Because otherwise we will be hiring all these people to heal all our past traumas and all these situations that are getting us sick or for some reason are stopping us from getting the better job or, you know, the relationship, whatever it is. Unfortunately, we cannot have anyone else do the work for us. And mm -hmm. I think that's just like a big one, right? That we, we try to disconnect from that thought of like, eh, later <laughs> yeah. we do this later but it is not and I think just the more we think about it the more we work on ourselves the better we'll be at the long run because we do live in this body and this body will really talk to us back when yeah. we're sick when we have all these mental health issues or however it's showing up for yourself so and it's not about I mean we have a lot of tools that we can use for a lot of these things and And we should be grateful that we live in this era where we have everything very accessible. So that's super, super cool. And so let's talk a little bit more about the the cannabis size. What do you decide? What was the turning point of like, I am going to use cannabis for healing too? Well, I, I think first to tell my story of how I came to cannabis is the plant myself. So I I was always a good goody two shoes and I'm actually the first time I smoked cannabis I was when I was working at the church and I always think that's such a great story of like you know during the day I'm you know ministering to people and you know praying out loud with them and then at night I'm like smoking dope right and it was just like this really great I don't know I felt like it was just this paradox and um but that first time I felt euphoria I was just like oh thank god I mean I, I literally it was just such a weight off because I was so in my head all the time and, and it was just this like lightness and it was just like, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. Um, and then I used it inappropriately. I mean, I used it for recreational more than anything, but I was combining it with booze, which was like a terrible idea. Um, and, and then really when I got serious about it was, um, I, around the same time I lost my voice, uh, through that. Uh, surgical error, I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress. Um, and so I actually became a medical patient. And I, through that time, found my way to cannabis meditation. And that's actually how I got my voice back. I had my voice back in three months after the initial injury. And it was smoking weed and, um, and listening to throat chakra music and processing my experience of how much of my voice I've held back 
um, because I wasn't safe to express and how that was, that was my spirit, right? Like that was my, me not feeling safe to be who I was. And all of that energy got stuffed into my thyroid, right? And that's what I believe in that these nodules grew because of the fear I, I had associated with using my voice in my home growing up. Um, and so I was able to like see that, right? And I could see those patterns that I got into from stress and how they continued to contribute to my stress as an adult. Um, and yeah, and that's how I got my voice back. And then um, right around that same time, I found this beautiful woman um, named uh, Colette Patricia. And she had a practice she called Cannabis Meditation. And I listened to a podcast and I was like, holy crap, she's given me words to what I've already intuitively known and how I've been using the medicine. Um, and so I took all the training that she offered. And um, that's really kind of what gave me the confidence then to lead people through guided experiences um, for cannabis. And so I meet monthly, uh, we have a, a circle we called we call High Council. It's women only at this point. Uh, we come together on Zoom, you provide your medicine and we smoke together. I do a blessing over the cannabis. And then I do a gentle body scan where we're able to allow that euphoria to touch these different parts of our body that we carry that stress and tension. Um, and then that's its own kind of healing experience for people often. Um, I've been working a lot with women who've got some, you know, womb stuff going on. And um, I had one really powerful experience where she was like, you know, I, we got to that space and she's like, and all I could feel was fear. And she's like, and then around me, the the sirens were going off and car alarms were going off around me. And I, all I could feel was fear. And so it's like, okay, the body showed you that you're holding fear in your womb. Like, where's that come from? Like, how do we help unwind that? And then what's the body work that's necessary uh, to support you in that process? Um, and cannabis, the, the way cannabis works is it's, it's bringing our bodies back to homeostasis. It works within the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system has one job it feeds 11 of the major body systems and it's one job is to rebalance, to find that ground, that homeostasis, that safety again. And so when we allow the medicine to work, we open the body to it, we release and relax the tension and the resistance, the body will tell you what, what, what your work is. And then you're right, it's up to you to do the work. And one of the things that I just recently saw that it like literally changed my life. And I, I, I really relate to media in my own healing process and just kind of, I just really, it's always been a thing for me. And I watched Stutz, Jonah, the, the documentary, have you seen it on Netflix with Jonah Hill and his therapist? Mm -mm. So good. And he talks about part X that, you know, we as humans are guaranteed three things. We're guaranteed uncertainty, we're guaranteed pain, and we're guaranteed that life is constant work. And so I'm just like, okay, do you want to, do you want to be work? Does that work come in the form of working to be your whole and authentic self in the world? Because it's going to be work anyway, or is it going to be work dealing with the manifestations of come that come with not being your, your whole self? Mm -hmm. Either way, it's going to be work. So I choose the work that's going to free me that I can live in joy. So, yeah. I don't remember what your question was, but I hope that answered it. <laughs> no, no, no. It I like that. It it's so true. And I think I will add that too, that one of the other things that we know for sure in life is that we're gonna die. And that we never can like address that within or a lifetime. I think um yeah. a lot of people just leave in a state of fear, not addressing that eventually we all die. And that's like a guarantee one for for everyone as you we were talking about cannabis you were talking about smoking cannabis mm -hmm. and this is just kind of like a personal question I suck at smoking I I don't smoke at all like I'm not a smoker if I will have if I will want to um have some sort of experience like that how would I do it mm -hmm. okay so gummies here's the deal with Smoking, if you're going to ingest it, right, it has to go through the first pass of the liver. And so the liver actually changes or conjugates the, the molecule. And so it changes it from THC, delta 9, it changes it to 11 hydroxy. What does that matter? It, it, changes, the, it, it changes the blood brain barrier of the molecule. So basically you get more high from edibles than you would smoking. And so that's why I like, um, like 
smoking in, in ceremony is because we can gauge it much easier. We can dose it and titrate it. It's an immediate effect versus, you know, I think there's plenty of stories out there that people are like, I took one too many gummies. And then it was like a hell, you know, it was hell for three hours. Right. Well, we don't want to do that. I mean, that does tell us a lot in ceremony too, but, but yeah. for people who don't smoke. Um, so from a ceremony standpoint, edibles, eh, they're okay. Um, when we can't smoke, but what I really how I start people is with dry herb vaporizers. So part of the smoking is the heat and it's the smoke that hits the lungs and then it coughs and we cough and it's like really um, uncomfortable. But dry herb vaporizers allow the dry herb, um, it's either convection or conduction and slowly heats up the herb. And that's what then makes the chemical process that allows us to then inhale the endocannabinoid or the cannabinoids. Um, and you can adjust the temperature on that. And so for people who are you not used to smoking, you can take a little hit that's not a very high temperature that doesn't feel so constrictive and awful in the throat. Um, and then slowly kind of work your way up. Um, you aren't gonna get high doing that right away, um, but it kind of gets you that, that feeling of being able to inhale, um, inhale the medicine. And that's usually what I suggest for people is doing dry or vapor, vaporizers. And then from like a medicinal standpoint, um, you're getting more access to the whole entourage effect from dry herb vaporizers than you are through combustion or using a lighter. Um, and so that's the other reason I really love those products is um, it gives you more access to all the good, the good medicine at campus. Nice. And so what I know we talk about CBD and THC, right? So yes. will me getting some CBD and put it as a tea or something, will that have some sort of a effect as the same as smoking? Well, where, do I, where do I stand with these two products that are so foreign yeah. for me? <laughs> so CBD, um, one of the biggest misconceptions is that CBD is not psychoactive. That is not true. Psychoactive means it works on the brain. CBD absolutely works on the brain. We know that through lots of research. Um, it won't get you high though. You aren't gonna experience that euphoria. Uh, THC is what causes the euphoria um, and that works primarily with the brain versus CBD is more found in the body as far as an anti-inflammatory. Um, and so does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I would like to join you in one of these sessions, but I'm not smoker, will mm -hmm. I be able to just use, let's say, CBD? Yes, absolutely. Um, CBD tinctures about 30 minutes before we, um, before we smoke um, would definitely give you, because you're, you're ingesting the plant medicine, right? And you're ingesting it with intention. Um, and that will give you an effect. Is it going to give you the euphoric, like I have dissolved into nothingness and all I can feel is un infinite love in my body? You're probably not going to get there. You'll need THC for that. Um, but what, where you can go with CBD in like a high council setting where you have this guided space to help, help you find different parts in your body, you can, inc you can experience incredible healing benefits from that too. And, and that's awesome because I feel like a lot of people, they probably just want that and don't want the whole high experience or whatever. They're not looking for that. They just really want to maybe connect to their body and release some of the baggage they're they're dealing with it. So I think that's a it's a really good option. And I think the misconception of people that uh, we have demonized um, just marijuana and cannabis for so long. I think it takes a while for people to understand that it is a plant medicine. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I see where we're going currently in cannabis culture and it does break my heart a little bit. And I feel like that's what's empowered me to use more of my voice is we have really gravitated towards this, this way of like recreational and like how is the government gonna be able to tax it and make money off of it, right? When it's been a plant medicine and a plant spirit medicine for a really, really long time. And now humans are trying to make money off of it. It's all felt really yucky to me. Um, and we do, we have like a whole, how many decades worth of fear mongering starting, you know, way back in the 1930s, which we all know is based in racism. And um, so we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do to re reestablish the reverence of the plant. 
Um, and it is, it's a plant medicine that needs to be used carefully and cautiously. Now, I also think that play and creativity is medicine too. And so we can use it in those, you know, using cannabis outside of ceremony, there's nothing wrong or bad with that, right? Like we think it augments, it's a, it's a non-specific amplifier. It augments, you know, our creative processes and our fun and our play and our rest even. Um, and so I think that it can still be used in those ways very responsibly. Um, going to a party and popping gummies and then getting shit faced is really kind of counterintuitive. Like it, that just doesn't work. Um, and I think that's where I get a little like, wow, where are we, how are we educating that this is a plant medicine? And then, then part of me looks at like what's happening in the world and how disconnected we are and like all the things that mother earth is going through. And I'm like, what's the current, like the karma, the karma consequences of misusing plant medicines? Like, is our mother earth going, hello, like I gave you this plant to use it appropriately and to, for communion with the spirit. And you all are just joking around, mm -hmm. trying to make money off of it. Like, what what is Mother Earth saying about this? <laughs> right? Lots to think about, definitely. But yeah, yeah. I feel like, uh, and not just with cannabis, but just in general with any psychedelics, anything that's out there that is being used for, for hundreds of years for healing, here we are marketing this as, as something else and I think that's where we we lose the essence of the you know the main thing what we in the first place put this uh plant medicines or the way we used to use these plant medicines so definitely it's a great point to make and just for everybody out there just to be responsible these are plant medicines conscious. that being in conscious about it yeah the these are things that they've been used for healing mostly and to bring the community together mm -hmm. and so those those are very um you know two points to make out there and just treat things with responsibility because I think that's when we um when we forget about those two things that's when crazy things might happen with these things because they do react to our bodies and to our feelings our feelings and as you said this amplifies everything that we have within so mm -hmm. just those two things to to think about it definitely and I mean this has been an amazing conversation is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we go no I just invite people if you're interested in any of this work to check out my website at your higher path healing.com pun intended um uh, I offer you check out my events and you can find the high council once a month on registration or RSVP there um, I do a fair amount of local events. I know you're down in Houston, but I do lots of events for women just to connect to their spirituality. Recently, we went to the Hindu temple. Um, and then the other thing I offer is, um, you know, CBD or not CBD, cannabis or not cannabis. Um, I do monthly uh, circles, women's circles around the full moon and the new moon. That's where we come together in like, you know, energy spaces um, and do some of that energy work together um, in circle and in that circle of safety. I think right now, after COVID, it's so important that we all have our communities and that we're actively engaging in community um, because I think that is the energy that our planet needs to be able to restore balance again. And so my uh, I, I offer that to women um, on the new moon and the full moon. And uh, the month for February, our, our theme is journeying back to self-love. So. so you can check me out on the website. And then of course, um, I'm sure you'll include my links to the socials uh, in the podcast. So. Yeah, for sure. I will add all the your information on the um, show notes and all the links and everything for people to get in contact with you. I think this is uh, great and amazing that thing that you're doing. Uh, and I like that you touch on the point, right, that we need to be in community. I feel like we have been trapped in this social media <laughs> for a long time. I've said it before, we scroll for at least of 20 to 30 minutes a day in one sitting. I'm not saying during the whole day, right? That's in one sitting. So I think really finding, you know, go, go out with friends, be with family. I think finding that human connection is essential for human evolution, you know, mind, body, and soul. So yeah. And it's don't. how we're built. It's how we're wired. And I yeah. will plug one more thing about that. I think women in particular, women in particular have to be 
in their bodies surrounded by other women because here's the deal if i have lived through my life as a woman in this one setting in this one scenario right like i only see myself through the lens of what's around me and i think oftentimes women find themselves in roles of caregivers and mothers and wives, right? And they just see themselves through that lens. But when you sit in sisterhood and circle with other women who can reflect your beauty back to you, there it changes a woman. And, and I think women right now, particularly, I, I, I urge women to go out and find your tribe, like find your people um, that allow you to be exactly who you are, authentically messy, um, because the world needs you. Like the world needs you in your power, in your body. and and other women will help you find that again if you're finding like you're searching for it. Yeah, for sure. Super important. I think that's one of those points that we need to often remind ourselves because we're so busy. So we tend to be on our own and not just for women, but I feel like in men, I think there was a um, a study that says that um, people that live in community um, had like 80% more chances to live healthier yeah. and that was like a huge thing I was like wow you know it's it's important statistically too if you don't do things in community um, you will probably die sooner and not be healthy yeah. and that just sucks <laughs> but anyways we can go all, all and over and over about all these things so hopefully you guys um, think of all these things that we talk about today I think there's some really good points to just keep reminding ourselves. So I'll definitely put all your links on the show notes for anybody that wants to get in touch with me. You can find me at alexbelka.com. You can find me on social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. And remember, my book is out. So if you want to grab a copy, you can uh, go ahead and do that on Barnes & Nobles and Amazon. It's called Parents Are Greatest Teachers. Thank you again for everybody that is listening today. Thank you everyone for um, just be open-minded and, you know, listening to our whole conversation if you made it to the end. <laughs> Thank you, Katie, for being here today. And please, everyone, have an amazing and blessed day today. Bye-bye.